Hello, my name is William Hurley and I'm a fourth year PhD student at the University of Michigan. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the subject of my research, hall thrusters. More specifically, we're going to talk about high current density hall thrusters, how they might be used in conjunction with chemical propellant for Mars missions, and some outstanding physics questions that I hope to answer during my PhD. At the University of Michigan, I am part of the Plasma Dynamics and Electropropulsion Laboratory. Our team pictured on the top right is a group of physicists and engineers that do cutting edge research on many different flavors of electric propulsion at both the low, mid, and high power range. It is easiest to understand the benefits of electric propulsion by comparing it to a traditional chemical rocket. The key principle electric propulsion aims to exploit is that the fuel efficiency of the device is proportional to the exit velocity of the propellant. In chemical systems, the best exhaust velocity is around 5,000 meters per second. In contrast, typical electric propulsion systems can exceed 30,000 meters per second of effective exhaust velocity. That is six, ti six times greater than chemical and results in significant fuel savings for a given mission. These properties are why electric propulsion is most widely used for satellite station keeping and deep space missions. Electric propulsion systems get their name because they are powered by electricity. This most commonly comes from solar panels that convert sunlight to energy but may also come from a nuclear reactor for a high-powered Mars mission. The key features of a Hall thruster, which I show here, are a positively biased anode relative to the cathode. Propellant is injected near the anode, where it is ionized and accelerated by a perpendicular electric and magnetic field. This produces a high-velocity plasma beam that is incredibly fuel efficient. For an even more depth visual on how Hall thrusters work, I encourage you to check out Dr. Thomas Mark's video, which I'll post a link to in the video description. One of NASA's large science goals is to safely transfer humans to Mars and back. However, there are still large unanswered questions about many aspects of this mission, including what propulsion system we use. In weighing different technologies for this mission, there is a trade-off between thrust or force produced and fuel efficiency. While hall thrusters are very fuel efficient, they produce a low amount of thrust and vice versa for chemical propulsion. Therefore, using either electric propulsion or chemical propulsion alone may be challenging and even prohibitive for Mars missions. Instead, the Mars Transportation Assessment Study, which I show a picture of in the bottom left, utilizes a combination of chemical propulsion for impulsive maneuvers and hall thrusters for longer burns. Strategically using each technology significantly re reduces the amount of chemical propellant used and power required for the EP system, making this kind of mission potentially feasible. However, before hall thrusters can be used for this mission, major technological advancements are needed. For example, the state-of-the-art power level for high-power hall thrusters is around 10 kilowatts, when greater than 100 kilowatt thrusters are actually needed to reduce the required thrust for the mission. One challenge with scaling hall thrusters to high powers is the device size. While building one of these devices at the 100 kilowatt level, like the X3 thr hall thruster, is difficult but doable, in actuality, we need an array of more than 20 hall thrusters capable of processing 100 kilowatts of power each. At this scale, you might be able to tell, it is definitely advantageous to reduce the size of the device for both weight savings and simplicity. So one question you might be asking yourself then is, can we just run a hall thruster designed for 10 kilowatts at 100 kilowatts? Well, before answering that, to actually increase the hall thruster power, you have to turn up either the discharge voltage or current. However, for a fixed total power, say you get a certain amount of power from your nuclear reactor, increasing the discharge voltage could potentially make your trip times too long to complete the mission. In other words, there's an optimal specific impulse or exhaust velocity um, for a given mission. Therefore, our lab has been primarily focused on increasing the discharge current for a given thruster size. Recently, we have actually demonstrated that, a dev that the device efficiency remains high at up to 10 times the nominal discharge current. So to summarize, yes, we can likely run a smaller device at 100 kilowatts, but there are a number of physics questions and engineering challenges we need to overcome before we implement this strategy for a Mars mission. So the goal of my PhD is to answer some of these physics and engineering challenges, which I'll outline here. The first is trying to determine what the Hall thruster current density limit is. 
Eventually, the magnetic field produced by the plasma would be of sufficient strength to perturb the nominal baseline field. This, in turn, could negatively impact device efficiency. Another open question is how does erosion of key thruster surfaces like the discharge channel and the pole cover change as we increase the current density? In fact, erosion may limit the overall device lifetime more than in standard operation as we're putting more plasma in the same uh, given area. Another obstacle to high current density operation is how to actually manage the thermal loading. Since we are putting more power into the same thruster area, surfaces will necessarily need to reject more heat. We can see an example of this in this photo, where a picture of some of the hot thruster surfaces that will need to be managed carefully at high current densities. And lastly, but perhaps most important, we do all of our thruster testing in vacuum chambers on the ground, which are the closest thing we have to space, yet they are not perfect. 100 kilowatt thrusters will push the limits of what the world's best chambers can handle, and so we need to develop engineering solutions to make testing more representative of space. So thank you for listening to my video, and I hope you all have a great day.